Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Raka Kodash. Double honors unto the apostles and the elders of the great millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations unto the hopeful elect. This is Brother Yerushalam coming back at you with another video through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Raka Kodash. The name of this one is No Project Blue Beam. Experts or FBI expert says Esau has his own chariots. All right, and this is the video I'm gonna go through here is from the YouTube handle Redacted. All right, you know this um this information or this um this YouTube channel just to use for um, educational purposes. All right, so you put up the copyright disclaimer in the front of the video. All right, basically, um, a former FBI agent John De Souza. All right, he goes into basically, you know, how that um saying that that Esau Edom, the so-called white man. The elites of Esau Edom, which we know who these are, you know, they they actually have chariots. Alright, they actually have chariots. Alright, he also um goes and speaks about you know the, the project blue beam that you know we too are the great millstone. We go into and speak about the project blue beam and all these things like that, you know. But what he's actually saying is that you know is that these 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 um these elites they actually have chariots of their own, right? But the chariots are physical of uh, uh, physical um vehicles right that look that look or impersonate the chariots of the most high chariots of yabashim yawashai all right using possibly anti-gravity technology and very high voltage systems you know you know which basically tap into en the energy field around you know, here this is this is stuff that um this guy you know uh you know freezer was probably was a edomite nikola tesla was into you know zero point energy field quantum vacuum and vacuum energy right basically you know they have enough um energy in a cup in a normal teacup that could run the whole world all right it's the kind of energy the kind of power fields that you know he was dealing with before he passed away and when that when he passed away um he saw raided his hotel room and, you know, and took all his information so don't be surprised you know plus there was another guy um i forget his name i did a video a while back i'll, I'll repost it if i get a chance you know where this guy was basically saying you know he was a physicist normal physicist or astrophysicist i can't remember you know and he was saying um you know that they took him to roswell and you know and he was there for a while and you know, he saw the nine vehicles that they had that they were so-called chariots nine physical vehicles it seems like and um you know they you know the lord look at the lord gave them these vehicles to reverse engineer everything off of so everything was reverse engineered off of these things all right, pretty much, pretty much like how we saw um, in the movie, uh, the Transformers. Remember the movie Transformers? I'll play a clip of that later on. You know where they had NBE one, so-called Megatron. All right, and they would they were reverse engineering everything off him, including the um, the C hip, including including the C hip. All right, the um, the the what do you call it, the potato chip, the R fit C hip, also called the Kragma. Okay. So let me um let me play some of this video here, probably about 12 minutes of it. Go through some precepts and I'll close it out after Lord will. Let's go. Sort of silver colored, um, and what they are is they're they're top secret drones. They're they're drones that possibly use anti-gravity technology from possibly Roswell. That was technology transferred from Roswell. And so we have all so that's what this guy is, is saying you know he has a book called the extra dimensionals all right where he was saying that you know all was going on now with these um so-called um um the so-called balloon from china and whatnot you know he's saying he's basically saying that you know they, they these things they, they really have um chariots that can do these things that can fly very fast you know that could that capable of shooting down objects or destroying things on the ground or on, on the air all right so let's go all of these UAPs, and in 2004, we had a final giant experiment uh, off the coast of California in the Pacific Ocean, where we had the uh, no less no less a power military force than the U.S. Nimitz uh, Carrier Group Battle Carrier Group that was off the coast of California and gave a and created a, a safe space for this final experimentation that went on. That's my 
uh, description of what happened. In the, uh, in the uh, New York Times and other, in all media around the world, it was described as, well, the Nimitz carrier group just suddenly happened upon these uh, UFOs. And mm. uh, they, they kind of, you know, use softer language to describe UFOs. But they said, oh, this group of UFOs were buzzing around and they were at incredible speeds. And here's the pilot's conversations that uh, they had at the time to tell us about this. It's incredible. It's amazing. Uh, and uh, then we had the launch. That was the launching of the UAP phenomena across this country. Hmm. So, All right. So there, there you had it, you know. Basically, he's saying that, you know, what happened with those footage with the TikToks or the Nimitz, I believe back in, was it 2017 or 2014, um, where the where TikTok, where they got the imagery from the USS Nimitz. All right, it was all a setup. Okay. It pretty much was all a setup. All right, it's a, basically they used top secret drones. All right. You know, which we're doing this thing, you know, to what? To frame a narrative. Let's continue. Starts there, right? When the New York Times breaks that story, right? And everything. Oh my God, now we can talk about this, right? In the mainstream. Right. And the Pentagon can start exactly. holding. We're going to have committees on this. Congress is looking into yes. this. Senator Marco Rubio yes. wants to make more money off of this. The whole thing starts and, and moves exactly. in that direction, right? And it's a psychological exactly. operation. So it was all yes. controlled, was what you're saying. This idea that this. Yes. We, we knew that USS Nimitz was going to be there, and this was all sort of planned for this to be launched and sort of disseminated to the public. So these drones, exactly. these, these craft, are they U.S.-made craft, reverse-engineered from down Roswell craft, or are these otherworldly beings, otherworldly craft? What does your intelligence tell you about that if you were in, involved in the X-Files program and <laughs> yeah. you know, at the FBI? Well, what do you know about it? Yeah, because he, this guy was actually um, the X Files stories, you know. The full, according to, I think he said the whole first season were based on his FBI experiences. All right, so it's based on true stories. So it's just the X Files first season is good to get. As I said, I believe in fact, all the seasons are based on true stories. All right, you know. So basically, this UAP versus UFO thing, this UAP thing, um, it's a psyop. All right, it's a psyop that they created since back in from 2004, right? Really, from they push it from 2012, all right. Which, which, funny enough, coincides with Project Looking Glass, where they were looking into the future, you know. And the, the when in, in this time, the U.S. Navy took over the entire UFO um, genre from the Air Force, right? Which, which you know, as obviously unidentified flying objects or on on unmanned or unmanned or identified aerial phenomenon. Obviously, it's aerial, so the Air Force should be involved, right? But you no, know, they gave it over to the to the Navy, all right. And then they set up um, priests and pastors and whatnot to set up a narrative, a religious narrative, you know, to show that these to say that you know these how people are gonna react across across the world, you know, knowing that and realizing that you have a or shy, or you have shy coming back with the chariots, say Lord and the angels, the Lord is inevitable, right? From Project Looking Glass, you know, it all. It's all piecing together. It's all beginning to piece together. All right? It's all beginning to piece together. You know, what the guy explained is that, you know, they have some certain off the book, off the um, books notes, you know, that they use, you know, so they sign up, they write other books, you know, that they nothing sworn to, which, you know, the, of course, the FBI and those guys cause them to swear on the whatever they put in the FBI files, but these books are outside the FBI files, so that's how he could bring out this information. All right? So this is what he's going into. All right, so he's saying that these are top secret drones, all right, you know, basically, which it makes sense because if these if these employing certain technology that could fly faster than nine, basically um, nine times the speed of song, the human body can't can't withstand more than nine Gs, I believe. All right, you know, as if these anything, if these vehicles any um so fast, you know, the human being wouldn't be able to withstand it, so they would have to be drones. All right, with possibly, as you say, with anti-gravitational tech, possibly from the Roswell um, crafts that they receive. All right. You know, let's continue here. Well, you had about three questions there, and I would say yes, no, and yes. But uh, <laughs> okay, the, go for the it. Answers, <laughs> the answers are that um, no, they are. They are man-made. They are man-made uh, things. Uh, they are 
they are recognizable by the signature silverish sort of skin that they have. It's this, uh, but the shapes tend to be different in every case. There are some that are cigar shaped. Uh, there are some that are larger. There are some that it's like um, Zachariah the fifth chapter of flying rule, you know, and which, which coincides with what the guy was saying. Um, the physicist, I can't remember his name right now, but I'll repost the video when I find it. You know, where he was saying that, you know, they had nine of these vehicles, different shape sizes. All right. So they reverse engineered things off of this. You know, as, as we can see, um, back, let me go here. Let me go to library. As we're going to see here, just like what they did in um, the Transformers, what they showed in Transformers. These devils know, see, you know, they know what they're doing. You know, they show everything that they that they actually did. What you're about to see is totally classified. Dear God, what is this? We think when he made his approach over the North Pole, our gravitational field screwed up his telemetry. He crashed in the ice probably a few thousand years ago. We shipped him here to this facility in 1934. Call him NB-1. Well, sir, I don't mean to correct you on everything you think you know, but, I mean, that's Megatron. He's the leader of the Decepticons. He's been in cryostasis since 1935. Your great-great-grandfather made one of the greatest discoveries in the history of mankind. Fact is, you're looking at the source of the modern age. Microchip lasers space flight cars all reverse engineered by studying him all right so you see all reverse engineered by studying him but literally speaking about what most likely those chariots that the guy was speaking about all right this is what this um fbi agent is going into for former fbi agent now let's go back to the video uh, there are some that are larger there are some that are much much smaller uh seven, some of them are those tic tac shapes those kind of ovals uh so they're all different uh shapes and sizes however they have the um they have the same uh signatures uh of the uh, movement that they are able to capable of however the way that we know they are not true so they have certain characteristics just like the chariots as we've seen you know they have certain size shapes all right so basically the, he, he saw have been mocking the lord you know trying to be like the lord you know i will be like the most high there's any scripture say that um um i believe that's um isaiah isaiah the 14th chapter is it you know you know let's get that let's get that let's bring in that precept this is the book of isaiah chapter 14 all right and first i'll start at verse um 13. it says for thou have said in thy heart i will ascend into heaven right this is the firmament is in space i will exalt my throne above the stars of god the israelites you know and, and the angels you know I will sit upon also upon the mount of the congregation in the size of the north in America. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Right? So they, this is this is what they're doing. They want to be like the most high. Alright? You know, in all respects. In terms of the you know his chariots, because the glory of the Lord is his chariots. So the glory of Esau, you know, would, would be his char his chariots. And he literally, from what this guy is saying, he has chariots. Alright? And the Lord, the Lord does this because why? The Lord is a man of war. He, he wants Esau to have a good fight, you know, to fight him in as best as they could, which they could never fight with the Lord anyway. All right, Exodus 15, verse 3. The Yahweh is a man of war. Yahweh is his name. <laughs> and the Apollo says, after Pharaoh's chariots and his horse had he cast into the sea, his chosen captives are drowned in the Red Sea. So the same way the Lord cast Pharaoh's chariots into the Red Sea. Is the same way you're gonna cast Esau's chariots, you know, which he created in here, you know, which the Lord gave him to create anyway, this proud devil. Alright. He gonna the Lord gonna cast them and you see nothing new under the sun. When we go to the book of Revelation, chapter 12. 
And um, verse 7, it says, And there was war in heaven, Michael, or Michael Allah, one like the power, right? And his angels, which are angels, a messenger, fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought on his angels. And his angels, as the guy was saying, is going to what? Like a dro drones, they are drones really. Right, these so-called chariots. Right, this is the word again for angel, angelos. Strong's G32, Angelos. Angelos. Angelos, a messenger, an envoy. One who is sent, do, do you not send a drone? All right. This thing, this thing is getting more and more clear as we go on. A messenger, envoy. What, what do you would messenger? Um, let's go web search. Um, it says, uh, let me go. I want to get the definition. Messenger. Definition. Definition. Messenger. A person who carries a message. Or employed to carry messengers, you know, a, a death angel, a death messenger. That these drones are really a death messengers. His, his fighter jets are death messengers. When you go back here, it says an envoy. Let's get that. Envoy. A messenger or representative, especially one on a diplomatic mission, right? You know, these these devils use these um these different drones, you know, to assassinate people. All these things like to destroy places. All right. It's so wow. See, though, see, this is where it's, this is where it's going. All right. And that's and this is exactly, you know, what the Lord said. You know, in the scriptures, you know, we talk about um, these angels that do the will of the will of the Lord. You know, the angel is somebody does the will of the Lord. Let's get um, another precept here. Let's get the book of um. Psalms 103 and verse 20. It says, um, Bless the Yahweh, ye his angels that excel in strength, right? And the angels are excelling in strength and they have chariots. Chariot is, is the glory of the Lord, his strength, power, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. So these drones, they do the same thing for on Esau's side and the left hand side, right? Bless ye Yahweh, all his hosts, his armies, right? You know, the chariots are the armies, the angels are the armies. You saw on the other hand, you know, he have his, his own chariots, his own fighter jets, the, the F-16, the F-22, the, 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 the stealth Blackbird, all right, the, the M1 Abram, all these things are like are chariots, all right, and they have these chariots now, which are more advanced, which you haven't shown us yet, which the guy, you know, the agent is speaking about, you know, this is what they've been hiding, all right, bless ye Yahweh, all ye his hosts, ye ministers of his. Right, so in the NLT it says, "You armies of angels who serve him to do his will." The same thing the, the, the technology does, the, the advanced jets, you know, and this this will be probably the most advanced technology that this devil has in his arsenal. All right, bless your Howard, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless your Howard, oh my soul. So these um these jets, you know that that that's that's the blessing that he saw that that's his swords, is is form of destruction, you know, a form of destruction. But when you go into it, you know, it's really serious. And let's let's continue in the, in the video here. Some more to play. Movement that they are able to capable of. However, the way that we know they are not true UFOs. True UFOs can be extraterrestrial and extra dimensional. In other words, they can. They are usually uh, they have capacity for shape shifting. They have a capacity for disappearing and reappearing they have that is one of the ways that we know genuine ufos are afoot uh we're able to see those qualities in them these tic uh, these tic tacs these uaps don't have those don't have those abilities however i i do believe that they are very they have the ability to uh destroy things to destroy things and that's why they're being uh built up Right, because those 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 you were pieced by um you know on the source side that they've created that they've reverse engineered all for the charts that the Lord gave them and what he's saying, you know. Um they are physical, you know, carnal. They're not spiritual, the chariots are spirit. Alright? You know, the extraterrestrial, they're not of this world. You have of space, you know, they extra dimensional, which means they could disappear into the dimensions, 
fourth dimension, come back into the dimension, they could shape ship, shape, shape, change the shape. You know, they basically are transitional state of matter, right? You know, they um they feel filled with light, which is the power of your of your bashim, your shai bashim, your kakodash, right? Because there was um an example in um I believe it's Randall, some forest in England, at a United States base. All right, where basically you know you know it, it, these chariots were basically lighting up, filled with light, you know, and this is how we really can know the difference. We have to know the difference between Esau's chariots and the chariots and the Mosai, you know. Esau's chariots can't cloak; they can't go in and out of the mansion and re disappear, reappear, you know. They not they don't have the kind of light capacity, glowing capacity, to not fill with the power of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. All right. They're not. All right, so let's go here. Let's continue. They are not. They are not. And this is the, the thing we're struggling with even now uh, in our Congress, in our Senate, uh, and in other places. Uh, the, uh, they are not. They are man-made, but they appear not to be made by the United States per se. Uh, we do have a congressman recently. Um, I, 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 I don't want to get summoned before any subcommittees so i won't say his name but we have a congressman uh from i think he was from indiana who ran around uh, he was running around to these different subcommittees and one of the things that he said was these things uh are appear to be man-made and this is after several classified briefings that the subcommittees think nobody finds anything out about uh he said it appears that these uh that these vehicles are man-made, indeed they are, but they're not made by the United States. They appear not to be made by Russia or China. However, we uh, it does appear that our global uh, aerospace companies probably had uh, several hands in creating these things. And he's talking mm. about McDonnell Douglas, Raytheon, and several other companies that really don't consider themselves american uh they're actually they're actually global global companies and he said it looks like those guys had had some kind of hand in creating these uaps but it appears they are not under the control of the united states or any other nation and and that's that's all he said and it was amazing uh when he said that uh because it really leads to several other conclusions that well then who's controlling them uh and it appears it appears that uh the, the ones who are controlling them are the deep state the which is not an american uh, organization the deep state the uh the uh, cabal uh the Illuminati, the power that is over the nations appears to be controlling them he saw edom salmon global bank and elites these are the ones controlling them all right which are what Amalekites. All right, and the Lord said what? The Lord said He promised war with Amalek from age to age. Exodus chapter 17, verse 14. It says what? And Yahweh said unto Moses, Write this for a book in a for a memorial in a book, and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven, right? Because Amalek was always attacking against Israel. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it. It just says Jehovah Nisi Israel, Yahweh Nasa. Yahweh Nasa. Alright? And what, what that means is lifted up. Or banner. Nasa. Alright. Um let's see um Strong's H three thousand seventy one. Yehovah Nisi. Yehovah Nisi. Which is Yahweh Nasa. Now, when you go into the wood, let me see if I can get that. You know Yahweh, Jehovah means Yahweh. Nis. Right. You go into the root wood, you get Nasas, which is from where they get this space program for the US space. This is Nasa. Alright, to be lifted up. Right, to be lifted up to this place. So, this is, this is Esau Amalek, namely mocking the Mosai. You're lifting up Nasa, lifting up this space program as a banner against the Mosai. Right, this is why the Lord said, you know, He's gonna destroy these devils. All right. So Moses had built built an altar. So NASA, the space program, is an altar to them, 
said he saw the worship in himself as God. Right? For he said, verse 16, Exodus 17 and 16, for he said, Because Yahweh had sworn that the Lord will give will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Right? So these devils set up set up um the space station, station. They've been reverse engineering everything. What for these these um chariots that they had, right, stored away in Roswell, and where maybe other places in the world, alright? And all going back to what to fight to come back to fight against the Mosai. Right? Using the same weapons that the Lord gave them, the same sword, to fight against the Mosai. You know? And from the time they set up that banner, which they did in um back in the sixties, when they go to the book of um Obadiah, first chapter, which is one chapter, and verse three, let me read it. It says, The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high. That said in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? And all this space, the, 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 um, the big skyscrapers, all these things, lad. Right? It says, thou sh Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars. Right? The space station. Right? The space program, NASA. Right? They set the nest up there in the stars. Then will I bring thee down, said the Lord. So once they did that, once they set up this, this station, that's where the beginning of the end began. You know, it started. You know, because at the end of the day, you know, the Lord is not going to let them, you know, go and explore the whole universe. And, you know, that, that's Jacob's inheritance, not them. Not their inheritance. Right? The Lord is not going to let them, let them have their way. Okay? They're going to have only limited success up there in space. Okay? You know? Because when these devils, um, when these devils, um, basically, these devils, and they, they already started, they were sending missiles into the sun, certain things are happening. I think Gina Maria Colvin Hill, she got some information, they were sending projectiles into the sun. Alright? So they're, they don't, they're already, um, starting their war, they're still battling, they're trying to battle against the Most High, Yahabashim Yahushai, and, and Yahushim Mashiach. Revelation 12, and verse, um, Verse 12, it says, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our power, and the power of his Amashiach, for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our power day and night. And they're not only going to be accusing Israel, they're accusing the very angel, they're going to be blaspheming the angels of the Lord. Right? You know, put, putting themselves up, at the image up as the angels, but also to, you know, Basically lying against the angel because they're going to set up, they're setting up a whole narrative now that um that these angels are, are the enemies of Israel, you know. And as the guy goes on in the video, when he goes through the video, he goes on, you know, basically to say that um, you know, that the next step in these in this UAP, UAP business, UAP business that is setting up this narrative that is setting up that they you know as a fake alien invasion. Alright, that's that's the end goal of fake alien invasion. Not actually Project Blue Beam. Not actually no, no holograms. Alright. You know, they actually have chariots that are gonna come in and start shooting down commercial airplanes, shooting down military jets, you know, damaging civilian property. Alright, all to make people like be against the angels and against the Mosai, Abashim So they're gonna they actually lying, you know, on the on the on the angels. Alright, and blaspheming them. Alright? I'm going that wood. Last theme. Last theme. Speak irre irrelevantly about God or secret things. You know, cuss, you know, imprecate, take the Lord's name in vain, or um, utter a curse or invoke evil against someone or something. So they're going to invoke evil against the angels, you know, for something that they haven't done. Because all the angels have been done so far is come and, you know, and shut down the missiles, which is part of prophecy. Revelation 7, all right, around the second and third verse, it goes into, you know, where the angel is going to hold back the four winds. That the wind should have blown you until the time, which is the ICBM nuclear missiles. They've been shutting down all these missile systems, individually sometimes, all right, one by one, all right. So this is what this devil Esau Edom is doing. Now, let me play some more of this video here. Appears to be controlling them, and that fits in perfectly with um, them eventually building up this campaign of fear uh, in the nations uh, which is what they're doing right now uh, to make people fear these UAPs uh, uh, ultimately towards and I'll tell you the next step it's it's a little difficult to hear but the next step because they need to keep building up the fear of these UAPs 
next step is really for the UAPs to start um, shooting down our commercial airliners and our military jets uh, from the skies. Uh, and that, I believe, is going to be happening very, very soon. So the fear, you know, at first we're hearing these Chinese balloons, we're hearing these stories about these things. And, and for decades, we've heard that these things are benevolent, that if anything, they want peace. If they're over, if they're over um, Maelstrom Air Force Base in Montana, that they don't want us using nuclear weapons, etc. Right. So you see? Well, let's skip forward a little bit. With those nuclear missiles at that point. So that, that's the narrative they're going to be setting up, all right, to get everybody against the Lord and his angels. Moment that nobody else knows. Uh, and that's one of the reasons. According to this guy, you know, so let's see if it's true when things are lining up in that direction. So they come and they deactivate these, uh, these nuclear missiles that are being readied for use in some capacity at that time. And there's been a long history of that uh, throughout, um, even before 1980, and even... Yeah, since the, since the 60s, I believe. ...beyond uh, at that time. So this has been going on, and that shows uh, benevolence. Uh, benevolence had to divorce themselves from the label UFOs, and they had to create this new thing. Uh, UAPs. And the ultimate goal, again, as I said, is fake alien invasion, which will not be pretty holograms, as many people believe. Many people have taken my theories and my work, and they've kind of screwed up the punchline. Uh, and the reason is because they, they're they saying, oh, well, fake alien invasion is going to be just a bunch of holograms from Blue Beam Project, from the, from the Blue Beam operation. Right. Uh, and no, that's not what it's going to be. It's going to be these very physical. Uh, and, and this is another thing. If you, if anyone follows my work um, or reads my books, they know that alien visitors and UFOs are not physical in the way that we are. They are just not physical. And that's something I first learned from the FBI uh, in a in a document that was handed to me as soon as I got into the FBI as a as what we call a control file. And it was the um, the uh, the uh, bullet, the uh, magic bullet. Um, oh no, the uh, which is a document. The uh, magic bullet is a document that I show in my in my book, The Extra Dimensionals. It's a government document showing an FBI agent who had an informant, and he he says in there that the uh, FBI that the informant was an alien visitor. And he says that the ale gave him about eight conclusions about, and this was at the time of Roswell, when everyone was going nuts, was going nuts and uh, trying to uh, ascertain what are all these UFOs. Apparently there was a huge worldwide uh, wave of UFOs across the planet at this time. Uh, so this FBI agent happened to be a scientist himself, and he actually sent out this uh, document to the world uh to the world and it said basically uh alien he gave eight conclusions alien visitors and ufos are not physical they are not physical they are from another dimension they are from yeah they're from the fourth dimension another dimension of reality and they can kind of manifest physically here for short periods of time they can manifest as long as they want you know, they, they, they come from the fourth dimension or the third heaven. All right, they're the angels of the Lord. And the same is true of the UFOs that come with them. Um, and he also said they are here for peaceful purposes. We shouldn't attack them. You know, because at the end of the day, they're going to get embarrassed like what happened in 1952 when the chariots appeared for 14 days and f flew hoops around the U.S. Air Force. All right? You know, but the point is, you know, ain't nobody shooting down no chariot. As he goes on to say, there's no shooting down, no chariot. You know, when you go, when you listen, in fact, let me play it a little bit more and then I'll go into our last precept and close it out. Ever. If we do, it will go very, very badly for us. Mm -hmm. And we saw, we saw exactly that happen in 1952 over Washington, over Washington, D.C., when a bunch of UFOs came in over the most protected airspace uh, in the world and our entire Air Force was sent out after them for the last time. It's the last time any any Western nation did that, and uh, 
uh, until now. Uh, and so, and the reason it was the last time is because those uh, over 14 days, we saw in the, uh, in the report that came out after that uh, in 1952, we saw that uh, those UFOs just embarrassed all of our military jets and did circles around them, uh, did over-unders, and for 14 days they just humiliated our Air Force and could very easily have destroyed them, mm -hmm. very easily. And right. they didn't. They didn't. They just hung around for 14 days for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, and they buzzed all over the Capitol and everywhere. And those appeared to be genuine UFOs at that time. Uh, but um, because they had that, those abilities, those abilities to be filled with light, uh, to be a shape a shifting trend properties and so forth. And so these are the things that we need to look at so that we can tell when the government is lying to us, when they say things like, um, yeah, we just, we just shot down a bunch of UFOs. Uh, we just shot down. We're not going to show you any of the materials. Uh, right. We're not going to show you anything or tell you anything about it. But yeah, just trust us that we shot down. Real, U real UFOs cannot be shot down. So with that, you know, real UFOs cannot be shot down. Why? Let's get a precept here. Let's bring in book of Isaiah, chapter 31, and verse 1. In fact, I mean, let me read from um, verse 3. Now the Egyptians are men in modern day Egyptians are America. Babylon the Great. According to Revelation 11 and going down to around 11, because Sodom and Egypt. Alright? Babylon the Great. Now the Egyptians are men and not God, not power. And their horses are flesh. The horses represent their chariots. The flesh, the physical, and not spirit, because the Lord's, the Lord's um, chariots are spirit. All right. So they talk about the different um, transitional states that you know the chariots have. You know, you can change, shape shifting, reappear and disappear, yeah, disappear and reappear in extra dimensional. You know, filled with light. You know, the the Esau can mimic those properties, those qualities. All right. Those are spiritual qualities. Right. When your Hawabashim your Shai shall stretch out his hand. Both he that helpeth shall fall, and he that helpeth shall fall down, and they shall fail together. And this is how they, what they're going to do. They're going to fail. But though they're going to fight against Yabashim, Yahashai, in the book of 2nd Ezra 13, they're going to fail. And with that, I'll put, in, I'll put the link in this description box for you brothers. Pray this lesson was edifying. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bashim, Yahashai, Bashim, Raka, Kodash. Double honors unto the apostles and the elders of the great millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations unto the hopeful lecture next time. Shalom and a bad ball.